मॉर्निंग क्लास गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग मैम के बिगन सर द चैप्टर फाइबर टू फैब्रिक This chapter is very interesting. Tell me the different types of fibers you have studied in class six. You have studied about different fibers, right? Yes, ma'am. What are the different fibers you have studied? Natural fiber and synthetic fiber. Now tell me, where does wool come from? Tell me, children. Where does wool come from? Sheep. Only sheep. Lama, yak, lamb, sheep, cat, camel, llama, and alpha. Okay, wool comes from a number of animals, right? There are a number of yes. wool-eating animals. In your textbook, see the the names of different wool-eating animals is given. Wool comes from sheep, goat. Yeah, and some other animals also. There is a list of other animals, and uh, tell me which part of uh, the animal is used for making for synthesizing wool? Meat. Meat. Fleece of sheep. Yes. We can also see, or we can also see the hair of the sheep. The fleece are called the hairs of the body. They are they are the hairs of the body. Okay, the fleece are nothing but they are the hairs of these animals. Some are very coarse hairs, the beard hair. Okay, so beard hair is very coarse, it's very hard, and the body hairs are very very soft. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's the right date. You have written the board. Yes. And we have to write that which you have written in the board. I I will send you the notes for this chapter. Okay. You just listen to whatever okay. I am teaching. Just pay attention to whatever is being taught. 
I will send you the notes for this chapter. Okay. Okay, okay ma'am. Ma okay. Okay, ma'am. Which part of the animal is wool extracted from? It is the body hairs, or which is more, which is called known as fleece. Sometimes the beard hair. Beard hair is also extracted, and from that also wool can be formed. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma the, which are the two types of hairs? Which are the two types of hairs? Which one? Beard hair and fleece. Beard hair and fleece also known as body hair. What is the beard hair and what is the other one? Under hair. Body hair known as fleece. Okay. Okay, ma'am. What is selective breeding? What is the purpose of selective breeding? Taking care of the sheep is known as selective breeding. If one taking two types of breed and make and breeding them is known as selective breeding. Listen, you know that one breed of sheep is having is is giving uh, hair which is. Uh, which is very, which is very good. Okay, it's, it's a very good quality. Okay, another sheep is very healthy, but it is not giving that good fleece. Uh, okay, so you you are selecting, you are selecting the breeds, and then getting uh, and then mating them, and then the progeny breed is uh, is having the desired qualities you want from the breeds. Right, that is selective breeding. What is selective breeding? What is the purpose of selective breeding? Then it is what is to get to get please we get to get fine wool. To get fleece which they wanted. Selective breeding is selection of the parents and then getting the progeny. What is the purpose? The purpose is you get the desired qualities. You want, desire, you want your desired qualities in the in what? In the progeny, you want desired qualities in the progeny. Okay, that is the purpose of selective breeding. Okay? See the next one. Which animals yield wool? Which animals yield wool? Sheep. Sheep. Goat, yak, camel, sheep, goat, camel, alpaca, yak. Camel, alpaca. Okay. It is the fleece of sheep, yak, wool is common in Tibet and Ladakh. Then, mohyar wool is obtained from Angora goats, Kashmiri goats. Okay. Uh, what are the steps in the processing of fibers into wood? Fibers into wood. What are the steps? Tell me. First, they cut the feet of the sheep. Process involved in the processing of Steps involved in the processing of food. First, uh, 
Name the animals which we eat. Eat the food. How many different meat and the names of the animals? And please repeat. Food eating animals. Name of food eating animals. Goat, sheep, yak, camel, sheep, agora, goat, goat and alpaca. Goat, alpaca and llama. What are the steps in processing the fibers into food? Next question is what are the steps? The steps in processing. First they cut the hair of the sheep, yes, then listen, they clean the... Listen, listen to me. First they shear it. First step is shearing. Shearing means... Shearing means removal of fleece from the, from the animal's body. Shearing means removal of... Removal of fleece. Sharing okay. means removal of fleas from the body of the animal. Okay, second one. Scouring. Second one is scouring. What is scouring? Cleaning the fleas of the sheep. Sorting. Sorting. It is sorting. Sorting. Cleaning the burns. Separation of different textures. Separation of different textures of the uh, hairs. Okay? Different textures of hairs are separated. That is sorting. Then what? What is the next, next step? 
meaning of bird removal of bird the cleaning of bird removal of birds there are the small fluffy fibers in the tear of the sheep you die and then the sheep is after that dying then the sheep will die coloring of coloring of fibers then and rolling okay. rolling at last there will be rolling last is rolling Rolling into fabric. We comb it, straightening, combing, and rolling. Sorting disease. Anthrax. Anthrax. Sorting disease. Anthrax. Bacteria. Yes. There is a bacterium called anthrax, which is also called sorting disease. The one the person who is sorting the the person who is doing the sorting job can also get infected with. Uh, with a bacterial disease called anthrax. Okay, anthrax is a very uh, it is also known as sorter's disease. Okay, it is a very fatal disease. It infects the blood. Sorter's disease okay, is a bacterial. Okay, it is it is also known as anthrax. Okay, it is infecting the blood of the person who is getting infected. Okay, uh, then. We will study about the processing of the silk. The processing, uh, the processing of silk is uh, in the the very lengthy process. Now we have studied about the wool. Wool processing of wool. Yes. Now we have studied about this. The next topic which we are going to study is the life history of silk worm and the processing of silk fibers. But before, but before moving to that. I will tell you the history of how the silk fibers were discovered. Okay, then we will study about the life history of silk worm. Then we will study about processing of silk fibers. These three topics we will be studying. I am showing you a video on how the silk was discovered. How silk was discovered? I am saying it is now. Yes. Ma'am, silk is discovered in China. Silk was discovered in China. Do you know how? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The the yes, queen of okay, China the was the princess of the the China was in the queen of China, the China was in white. I said white. Let me show you a video on this. Then the life cycle of silk worm. Then processing of silk fibers. Okay. Okay, yeah, ma'am. Okay, ma'am.
Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you can find really good. No. Can you see the no. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. my friends, this looks so delicate, doesn't it? But it's really strong. You know why? Because this is made of silk. Oh, yes. <laughs> And it feels really soft and looks royal. But do you know how we got silk? Come on, let's find out. Zoom in! According to Chinese legend, almost 5,000 years ago, Empress Shi Ling Shi, wife of Emperor Huang Jiai, was the first person to invent silk. One day, the Empress was sharpening her sword and sipping tea under a mulberry tree. A cocoon fell into a steaming cup of white tea and began to unravel in just a little while. The Empress was about to take a sip and to her surprise, she saw shiny threads roll out. The Empress was so fascinated with the shiny threads that she went on a hunt to discover its source. Her search led her to finding the Bombix Mori silkworm. She frantically went around the mulberry tree, gazing at all the cocoons. Seeing the worms wrapped up in their cocoons, covered in thread-like material, it gave the smart empress an idea of weaving it into a fabric. She rode back to her chamber and designed a method of production to create this fabric we know as silk. After much work, she sent the workers to collect eggs laid by the silkworms. Baby worms, known as larvae, hatched two weeks later and were fed mulberry leaves for a month. This increased their body weight 10,000 fold and they grew up to three inches. The larva began to secrete liquid raw silk from their salivary glands. When the liquid came in contact with air, it solidified into a single thread. The pupating larva spun itself into thick, cozy cocoons. This, my friends, was the first step towards the formation of silk fiber. Uh-oh! The cocoons were then boiled for three minutes to kill the pupa before it transformed into a moth. Boiling the cocoon melted the gelatinous protein that was binding the cocoon. They took 50 cocoons and wheeled them through a single hole of a bamboo stick from a hand-operated reel. As the threads passed through, the remaining protein glued it together, forming a single thick thread. The threads were finally woven into shivery and smooth pieces of silk cloth. Until 200 BC, silk was reserved for personal use by Chinese royalty only. And because the mulberry silkworms were found only in China, they used it to their advantage. China had the monopoly over silk trade and kept the worm a secret. Demand for silk became extremely popular and people from around the world traded it for gold and silver coins. But the secret could not be held for long. By 380, Korea started producing silk. Thanks to a few Chinese immigrants settled there. Soon the production of silk spread to Japan, India and Persia too. And very quickly, China lost its monopoly. By the 13th century, Italy had entered the Hall of Fame in silk history. It became the highest producer of silk. Soon France started challenging Italy's dominance over silk. But today, China has regained its number one status as the king of silk production. Oh, I almost forgot. I have to tell you something really fascinating. Trivia time! Did you know that a silk rope is stronger than an equally thick metal wire? In fact, it is the strongest natural fiber known to man. It is also used to dress wounds as it can dissolve and be absorbed into the body. Whoa, this is cool. Hmm, so you see friends how useful silk can be?
So the next time you see someone wear a beautiful piece of silk cloth, you know the story behind it. Off I go in search of another story for you guys. This is me zooming out. Hey kids, you liked my videos, didn't you? Before you go, don't forget to click. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, in world mulberry tree is known as Mora Salba. Yes. It is also important question. What is the scientific name of mulberry tree? Yes, ma'am. Mora Salba. Ma'am, bandage are also made from silk. This shows that not all bandage silk is very, very costly. Yes, ma'am. 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 Y
there are a number of silk producing countries in the world, including China, India, Uzbekistan, Brazil, Japan, and Korea. Now you know a lot about the life cycle of a silk moth. Bye bye. Okay, so this is about the life cycle of silk moth. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Yes, ma'am. Our topic for today is life cycle of a butterfly. So we, uh, today we have studied about the processing of wool, the steps in processing of wool, the different types of animals which help in the wool uh, industry, which help the wool industry. Okay. Then the last topic which we are going to study is we have already shown you the video on the processing of silk, and uh, we now will study about. The life cycle of the silk bomb. Okay? Now tell me what is the first stage in the life cycle of the silk bomb? What is the first stage? The first stage is. Ma'am, the mother, ma'am, the female silk moth lay hundred of eggs at one time. Ma'am. Life cycle of silk bomb. Ma'am, what is silk moth? Like butterfly moth is similar to that of butterfly. Moth is also similar to butterfly. Okay? Okay, ma'am. It is a kind of an insect only. Life cycle of Ma'am, we have to draw this in cup in our book. First, you can use the picture and then you can draw this in the hand. Now, in that moment, we lay eggs. We lay a number of eggs. Ma'am, they egg almost 300 eggs at a time.
stages. There are known as instant lavas. There are five stages of larvae. In case of silk form, there are five different stages of uh, larvae. Okay. Ma'am, can you send the PDF of the question? Yes, I did. I didn't get you. What are you saying? Ma'am, can you send the PDF of the question? PDF of question. Which question? Ma'am, these all the questions are of book. Yes, yes. This is I'm I'm discussing the questions from NCERT textbook only. I'm I'm discussing the textbook questions. Okay. So the, in case of larvae, there are five different kinds of larval stages. And after the larval stages comes the antler stage and then the pupa stage. Okay. Which of the following does not yield yeah. Bully dog. Uh, yes. Bully dog. Dog does not eat food. Okay. What is Bully meant dog. by the following terms? What is rearing? What is what do you mean by to the take term? care of? To take care of the sheep. No, it is not just the sheep. It is rearing means taking care of animals which which can yield wool, which can yield milk, which can which can give you eggs, which can give you meat. Rearing of animals. Okay, rearing means taking care of animals, feeding them on proper time, properly nourishing the animals. That is known as rearing. What is shearing? Shearing. What is shearing? Shearing out the hair of the sheep is known as shearing. Taking out the fleece of animals. Taking out the fleece of animals. What is sericulture? Rearing of silk worms to produce silk is known as sericulture. Rearing of silk worms is known as sericulture. Rearing of silk worms is known as sericulture. Given below is a sequence of steps in the processing of a pool. Shearing. What is the second step after shearing? Pooling. Scouring. 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 Then sorting. What is the what is the fourth step? Cleaning of birds. Removal of birds. Removal of birds. Then fifth step. Dying. Dying then rolling. Dying. What is the last step? Rolling. 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 Okay. Okay. Listen. Then you have the next six question is make sketches of stages of silk form. You have to. This diagram is very important. Okay? Ma'am, I have made now and I have sent in the group. Okay. Out of the following, which are the two terms related to silk production? Seri, glory, moriculture, apiculture, silviculture. What is related to silk? Silk culture and seri culture. culture and moriculture. Only sericulture. Okay. Uh, Only sericulture. It is written that there are two terms. Moriculture. Ma'am, there will be moriculture also. Yes, it will be moriculture also. Moriculture is what? It is culturing of mulberry leaves. Is moriculture. What is the scientific name of mulberry? Scientific name Moriculture. Moriculture. Then you have matching scoring. Where will you match scoring? Cleaning seared skin. Okay. Um, mulberry leaves. Where will you match mulberry leaves? Food for silk worms. Food of silk worms. Yeah. Food of silk worms. Yeah. Wool yielding animal. Wool yielding animal. Where will you match the wool? Yield silk fibers. 
Okay, see the next question. Given below is a crossword puzzle. You can do it yourself. You can do this crossword yourself. Yes, sir. Um, okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Anisha Singh has made a very beautiful diagram. I'm sharing with Anisha's uh, diagram with you on WhatsApp. She has made a very beautiful diagram of silk worms. Okay. Um, then I'm, uh, I'll be discussing some questions of workbook. I will send you the questions of workbook in the, uh, after some time. You know your uh, exams are scheduled. Yes, ma'am. Ma what is the syllabus for periodic test? Yes, I'm telling you the syllabus. Just wait for one minute. I'm telling you. Telling you. Okay, class seven. The syllabus is from chapter one to four. I've not taught you chapter four. I will teach you chapter four in the next class. We have finished chapter three. Chapter three was very small. Uh, chapter 4 is heat. It is a very interesting chapter. We will study in the next class. Okay. Before. Uh, Ma'am, please send the syllabus in WhatsApp group also. Okay. Um, please. Um, what will be the timing of periodic test and MCQ? I will tell you before the exams. Okay. Let me finish. Ma'am, the timing and the date is given. Okay, date is given to you, time is also given, syllabus is not given to you, I will tell you the syllabus, okay? Ma'am, timing okay, is not given. Timing also, you will, you, you know the date, before uh, the exams will come to come, I will, I will tell you about everything. First, let me complete the syllabus, okay? Let us, let us first finish the syllabus, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, see this question. Which part of the sheep's fleece is used for making wool? Which part? Under of hair. Under, under hair. hair. Yeah. Which one of the following is not a breed of sheep? Not a breed of sheep. Mura, Marwadi, Nali, Lomi, not a breed of sheep. Mura. Yes, Mura is a, a breed of cow. Okay, the hair of sheep is removed only once a year before the beginning of? Before the beginning of? Winter. No, if you remove the... Summer. Fleece, yes, it is summer. If you remove the fleece in winter, the animal will die because of the cold. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. See the next one. True false. Shearing does not cause pain to the sheep. Whether this is true or false? True. True. Okay. Nali breed of sheep is found in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. False. 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 Yak are not used for making to make woolen woolen fabric. Yak are false. False. Yes, false. Pashmina shawl woven from the wool are obtained from the under fur of Kashmiri goats. True. 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 The process of selecting parents for obtaining special characters. In their offspring is called selective breeding. True. 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 Yes. This is no. Okay. Okay, see the next one. I will send you the questions uh, for, you, for, for you, okay? Wool industry is an important means of livelihood for many people in our country. But sorter's job is risky. Sometimes they get infected by a dash called dash. They're infected by bacteria called anthrax. Bacteria. Bacterium called sorter's disease. 
called anthrax, which leads to a fatal disease called anthrax. Such risk, pay, uh, such risk faced by the workers in any industry are called dash and dash. What they, what are they called? Ma'am, can you repeat the question? Uh, uh, such risk factors. Occupational hazard. Yes. Occupational hazard. Yes, it is occupational hazard. Yes, it is occupational hazard. Okay. How would you identify that the given fabric is made of pure wool or impure new or new and pure wool? How will you identify? See, on, on pure and new wool, there will be no burrs. Okay, on old sweaters, you will find burrs. Okay, and on the new sweaters, you will not find burrs. Okay, why do wool yielding animals wear hair on their bodies? To protect them from cold. Protect them from the cold. To protect them from the cold. To protect them from the cold. Yes, yes. Uh, this please protect the animals from the cold. Okay. Uh, how many types of fibers form sheep hair? Too many types of fiber. How many types of uh, sheep hair? There are some beard hair. Yes, Ma'am, can you please uh, tell the answer of this question? Which, which, which question? Ma'am, the uh, I have asked just now. How many types of fibers form sheep's hair? Yes, ma'am. See, uh, one is the body hair and one is the beard hair. Okay? Following are the types, uh, following are the steps involved in the processing of fiber into food. Arrange the proper sequence. What is the proper sequence? Rearing, then shearing, Rearing, then scouring, yes, then cutting, yes. then removing bulk, then making, then dyeing, then, then, then making yarn. Ma'am, rearing, shearing, scouring. Sorting, removal of birds, coloring of fiber, rearing, shearing, so called dyeing, coating, and rolling. Dyeing and rolling. Okay. Why does a woolen garment keep us very warm in winter? Because it is a good. Because it is a. Yes. Because it is a good conductor of heat. Because it is a Because it traps a lot of air. Because, uh, see, air is a bad conductor of heat. It will not allow to conduct heat. Okay. In between the two layers of wool fibers, air is trapped, and this air does not let the heat to pass away. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is it ma'am? Can you please repeat the question's answer? See, uh, the question is: Why our woolen garment keep us warm in winter? Now, what happens with the woolen garment is uh, between the two layers of the woolen fibers fabric, air is trapped. Bet uh, uh, air is trapped between the uh, between the two fibers. Fabrics. Okay, and this air does not allow the heat to get transferred from the body. It does not allow the heat to get transferred. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, okay, okay. Yes, ma See the next one. Is it fair to wear sheep and chop off their skin for getting wool? Is it is it is it good? No. Yes, yes ma'am. No or yes? Yes or no? Yes. 
is good. We need to protect us from cold. No, we need to do good. that. Then, because if we will not share the ship there, then it will grow and grow, and ship will die because it will it will entangle with the air. Okay, there can be many answers to this question. What is the basis to decide the quality of wool obtained from the sheep? What, how do you know that it is a good quality of wool? If it will be soft, then it will be a good wool, and it will be coarse, then it will be not good for making woolen clothes. Yes. Okay. See this. Uh, this one wearing of silk bomb is. Uh, to obtain silk is rearing of sericulture. Sericulture. Sir, sericulture. 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 Silk is widely used for making clothes. Silk is widely used for making clothes. Which one of the following gives raw silk? Which one gives raw silk? All of these. All of these gives raw silk. Big animals, insects, in uh, all of these. Animals. In, animals. In, 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 uh, the silk one comes under the category of insects. Okay, see this one. Which of the following is not a type of silk? Is not a type of silk. Mulberry silk, tussar, moga, moth silk. Which is not a quality of silk. Mulberry silk. No, there is no. Moth silk. Ah, uh, there is nothing known as moth silk. Okay, we'll meet in the next class then. Thank you, Mabhi. Thank you. Thank you.